the last few days, I've spent my time delving into the world of Deus Ex Mankind Divided, the follow-up to 2011's excellent Deus Ex Human Revolution. Set two years after the events of the first game, Mankind Divided throws you back in the boots of Mr. Shades, aka Adam Jensen, to try and stop the factions of the world from destroying one another. To say some pretty heavy shit went down in the first game would be somewhat of an understatement, and thankfully there is a 10-12 to 12 minute video available to recap you on the events of the first game, although I highly recommend going back and playing it because it's a big game, very ambitious story and there's a lot to remember and they don't quite cover everything in this this short video. As we begin the game, Saraf Industries is no more and now Jensen is working for Interpol in Task Force 29 whilst also having ties to a group known as the Juggernaut Collective which is sort of this shady hackies, hackers just trying to do the right thing by everyone. The game really doesn't waste a whole lot of time kicking off, you're thrown straight into a mission on Dubai which is basically used as a, a refresher to get you back up to speed on the gameplay and uh, just sort of get you back into the world. Uh, it doesn't take too long before shit hits the fucking fan though as your crew are ambushed by these gold masks motherfuckers that we don't really know anything about but they instantly take out our target that the entire mission was based around and uh, then we're left and into the opening credits and all of that. Um, after this we travel back home to the city of Prague where we're greeted nice and get a nice warm welcome with a nice terrorist attack and this terrorist attack is where the story opens up, this is where the story branches from and most of the game is spent uh, trying to find out who's behind this initial attack so we can stop them from doing more and all of that. Uh, city of Prague is where you spend 90% no. of your time in this game <laughs> travelling between uh, two main zones completing main missions and side missions as they pop up. Uh, the, maj the majority of the side missions just pop up straight in your face like you won't miss them but there are a couple that you have to go out of your way to find just by talking to random NPCs. Uh, city itself and the overall game in general look fantastic. This is a gorgeous game. Uh, I had a couple of technical issues. I don't have an amazing PC so I had to fiddle with my options a fair bit. Uh, there's actually a sharpen option which makes a big difference on how the game looks, but it's a pretty significant performance hit. Um, there are a few times just walking around the Prague area where I was reminded of Half-Life 2 City 17 quite a lot. Just that combination of like old destroyed stuff and just shiny new metallic stuff right next to it, just it just made me think Half-Life for whatever reason. The two different zones themselves are quite large and there's a lot of detail in all of the areas and there's lots of NPCs out and about. Uh, transitioning between the two zones you have to do via subway and a loading screen. Uh, this loading screen is a bit of a troll sometimes, it's not too, too bad, but there were a couple of times where I was sat there for a couple of minutes just waiting, just watching this. Uh, loading animation loop over and over. As with Human Revolution there isn't actually a massive amount of variety in the environments regardless of what area you're in. Uh, there's a lot of you know sort of shiny metal buildings and little offices and you just sort of go in from vent to desk and so on and so forth like you always were. Uh, the few excursions out of Prague are done really quite well. The Udapec complex I think it is or the Org Ghetto as I like to call it. Um, is amazing. It's easily the the best presented and designed area in the entire game. It looks fantastic. It reminds me of like a an alternate version of District 9 or something. It's just it's really really well done. On a low note, in the last third of the game, the city of Prague goes into lockdown and it basically just turns every cop into a complete fucking arsehole who will shoot you and anyone on site. And it just means that when you're going tra traversing the city from mission objective to objective, going back to side missions, going in between zones, it means you have to always be in stealth or combat mode, so you've always got to be aware of these cops. And after you've gone back between zones sort of two or three times, it gets very old very quickly. One of the biggest criticisms of the first game was the inclusion of combat-oriented boss fights, meaning that if you were doing a stealthy run or focusing on non-lethal, non these fights became a lot harder than they really should have been and there should have been other ways to deal with them outside of combat but there weren't. In Mankind Divided this is alleviated in a few ways. Uh, firstly there's really only one boss fight and 
when it pops up, you can approach it in a number of ways. You don't have to just like go go loud and get the shotgun out, anything like that. The combat has been improved. It still doesn't feel very good. It's you can't play the game like Gears of War or anything like that. Even though it's improved, it's still quite rough, and the enemies just kind of run and look at you when they're alerted. Uh, the AI doesn't hold up too well in combat situations, I want to say, compared to just when they're walking their paths, patrolling, trying to find you. Another downside is that you still, you still, I'm pretty sure I remember reading somewhere that this wasn't going to be the case, but you still get more XP for taking a stealthy approach. Basically, don't be a dick and shoot people. Just play the game stealthily. It fits the character, it fits the world so much better in my opinion, it's just the way it should be. The combat option's there, if you get bored, you can whip out the shotgun and mow down a bunch of machine god cultists like I did. Um, but for the most part, you need to stick to the shadows and it's, it's the best gameplay loop that you get out of this game. Uh, speaking of the stealth, it's pretty much the same. There's really not a whole lot that has changed from Human Revolution. It depends largely on how you up which augmentations you choose to upgrade, whether you focus on hacking or extra non-lethal abilities. Um, I basically didn't use any of the extra abilities that are thrown in in this game, as they're basically just alternatives to using your tranquilizer rifle or takedowns up close and personal, and I have just kind of felt unnecessary, and that's one of the biggest problems with the, the upgrade system and a lot, a few systems in this game feel completely pointless. You're constantly getting credits and and materials. You're getting crafting materials. There's some crafting in this game, and it just feels completely unnecessary. You can sell stuff. There's not really that many places that you can actually sell stuff, and like you don't need to buy any ammo because it's abundant if you're even mildly <laughs> looking around the environments as you traverse the game. I. Uh, actually didn't use a hyper stim which is basically a med pack until the very very last encounter in the game i didn't use them at all i had like fucking 40 of the bastards or something like that and this links into another issue which is this is a really easy game i played this on the normal difficulty and i really wish early on i had gone back and swapped to a high the higher difficulty because this is a very straightforward game um it's, that's partly to do with a, a quick save system, which is nice, um, because the autosave is trash, as I found out early on, and it's partly because things like the hacking and the, the remote hacking from a distance that you can do to disable laser grids and turrets and stuff is really quite simple. Even like the level 5 stuff, you can go in, have a look at it, and you can be the first try pretty consistently. You. When you're not being the sneak bot master 5000, you'll find yourself engaging in dialogue with various NPCs on your missions or just in the street. The dialogue and <laughs> voice acting, for the most part, is really, really good. Uh, Adam Jensen, in particular, is really good. Uh, he isn't dissimilar to Geralt of Rivia. He's sort of that hard, but hard-edged, but caring character at the same time. Your Task Force 29 boss is meant to be an ex-Australian SAS operative and there is something about this guy's voice that just doesn't sound right and even the animations for his character seem really strange. He seems like some sort of corporate Kermit the Frog and it just resulted in me not trusting his ass at all. Um, <laughs> apart from all that, the other characters are well written and very easy to like or hate. The game's designed well and written well enough that NPCs actions and what they say is going to like elicit a reaction in yourself. Um, I also really enjoyed the interactions with David Sarah from the first game. He's kind of a more humble character now that his business has been dissolved and everything and he's just kind of less of a douche and it's nice to have that familiar face because there's not really a lot of a lot of that in this game. The main complaint with NPC interactions is the same one that I kind of had with Human Revolution in regards to the social enhancement augmentation, which in high pressure conversations basically tells you the right things to say so you can get the, the quote unquote good outcome. Um, there is one instance in a side mission where a character calls you 
on using your sneaky pheromone bullshit and you have to just handle the, the situation by reading the res your response options and getting the right one. That was a really good idea and it just it keeps the tension there when you're using the, the social enhancement augment. Yeah, it's still kind of cool and the conversations are really well written and it's engaging, but there's no risk of something terrible of you messing up basically. There's no threat of failure. And that's a really important thing to have in a game, I think. Overall, I don't think that Mankind Divided is a bad game. In fact, I think it's a very good game. It looks, plays and sounds incredible. Uh, the soundtrack, once again, soundtrack in Human Revolution was fantastic. The same guy's back and is doing it again. I've forgotten his name. I think it's Michael McGann or something like that. Uh, but it was extremely easy for me to play through this entire game over the last two, three days. I like it just sucked me in and I was happy to go along it ends rather abruptly and I was pretty disappointed when I did hit the end and I think part of the reason of why I got so sucked in and played through the game so easily is because I was expecting that escalation that really kind of obnoxiously uh, massive story like in Human Revolution where it just sort of it kept going and this just feels like a much more restrained effort from the the team it just sort of it's it stopped before I wanted it to basically and left me feeling a bit dry um, the game took me about 15 hours to play through I took it pretty slow like I said I was playing it stealthy for the most part um, and just sort of fumbling around there are a couple of weird issues with climbing into vents I had it several occasions where I just couldn't get into a vent and was would just have a guard come across this Adam Jensen dry humping the shit out of a wall and another incident another not an incident an issue is whenever you're sprinting around the world if you try and sprint down or up a staircase or some sloped surfaces it'll cut your movement speed in in like quarters it's like 20% movement speed you can't sprint up or down stairs you have to stop sprinting and move at a normal pace um, just your normal movement pace and you'll go faster if you try and sprint down or upstairs the game will shit itself but uh, yeah this is a game that I would happily recommend to any stealth or story driven game fans or anything like that you'll enjoy this so Thanks for listening guys, catch you later.